Matt, where I want to go with this is the risks involved. The, James Minchner was so upset over the myth-making and the certitude that it was all safe that he wrote a book called Space just to walk through in his historical fiction the risks involved. Are we ready today for the risk that they took that we need to take in the future? Well, I think we're certainly much better prepared for those risks than they were, you know, 50 years ago. I mean, you can't overstate uh, how you know, the kind of just human bravery of uh, people putting themselves on top of a rocket uh, with really primitive technology to kind of go and land on the moon. Uh, so I think today with the amount of technology we've got, the amount of testing, all of that kind of uh, understanding from those last 50 years, definitely much better <clears throat> position, but clearly it's still um, a hugely yeah. risky endeavor. I remember, Matt, the raging battles over how deep was the dust on the moon. No one knew, even with Ranger, our Bob Moon and Bloomberg Radio, his family was intimately involved in Surveyor. And the number one question is, could the thing get off the ground? And this was raging debates going on in all these topics. Tell us about the raging debate right now of whether governments are going to do this again, or is it actually going to be private enterprise, the province of billionaires? Oh, I think it's a mixture of the, 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 of the two, to be honest. I think it's really um, governments that are driving this ambition to a, get back to, to the moon and, and use that as a staging post to go on to Mars. Uh, but it's really commercial enterprise, private enterprise that's d providing the assets, if you like, and the technology and the research to actually uh, deliver on that ambition. Yeah, and to that point that Tom's brought up, how are different industries and corporates using these satellites in different ways now? Yeah, I mean, the, the satellite industry has changed hugely. You know, you know, a few years ago, it cost $300 million to put a satellite up there. They were enormous. Um, and now they cost somewhere, you know, one, two, three million dollars. They're very small, incredibly sophisticated. And together with uh, big data and advanced uh, artificial intelligence, you can do this really complex monitoring. And, you know, they're using it for the environment, for crop growth, uh, for mine monitoring, for even, you know, hedge funds use it to yeah. kind of, uh, to monitor kind of retail performance. So yeah, really sophisticated and it's a combination of all those different technology advances uh, and the cost coming down that's allowing them to do that. Matt, I actually did in college studies on the space shuttle propulsion system and also the idea of going to Mars. I mean, I understand it's 50 years on by the moon. It's nowhere on from Mars and this isn't, you know, the movie The Martian as well. Do we have the propulsion systems ready today to go farther than we did 50 years ago? Absolutely. I think we, we have, it, have those propulsion systems that can do it more reliably, uh, more cost effectively. Uh, I think that there's still a lot of um, technology issues to be solved to kind of um, deliver on those manned missions to Mars. They're still probably decades away, but that's clearly the ambition, uh, certainly for the US and I think potentially for China as well. Um, uh, but, you know, we're a long way there. And I think, you know, being uh, on the moon and having a permanent establishment there is really yeah. important to that.